Welcome back to more Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Last time, we saved two worlds by stopping the ultimate life form, Facto Elphilis. This time, we're entering the isolated isles to try to rescue Liangar, starting with the Forgo Plains. So, the Isolated Isles are interesting. They're kind of like a hybrid of two different modes from the previous most recent Kirby game, Kirby Star Allies. Um, it actually has several things in common, uh, which will- uh, one of which is right over here. Got a piece of Leon's soul. Wait, is this Leongar's soul? It must be a tiny fragment of it. If you collect more of these scattered soul pieces, you might be able to save him. Try to collect more pieces of Leon's soul as you explore the isolated isles of Forgo Dreams. This is mostly a combination of the guest star allies mode or a traditional extra mode in other Kirby games and the heroes in another dimension. Um, so like in that mode, we have these little collectibles we have to pick up. Uh, but in general, we're kind of going through older stages. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a mix of both. And honestly, I like this. Um, for one, it's actually nice having this in the base game and not as a post-game, uh, you know, several months later edition. It's nice to just have this. Um, I haven't really talked about it, but um, in, in general, this is probably one of the most complete games I've played in a really long time, um, and I feel like it's something that we take for granted, uh, games not having a patch or anything. Like, literally, um, when I'm recording this, which is the first week of April, there has not been a patch for this game, and that is extraordinarily refreshing and uncommon. Um, a lot of games nowadays at least have like a day one patch to like fix some minor glitches and things like that. This game doesn't have anything, um, which is great. Um, means it's very solid, just on cart, there isn't a ton of, like, game-breaking stuff where you need to update or else, you know, you won't be able to, like, pre uh, play the game properly, things like that. Um, and yeah, it just feels like a very complete adventure. Obviously, it's still a Kirby game, it's not overly long. Um, this is, um, part 19, um, but I've also started doing longer videos with this series, so I'm actually trying to do the math on how long this series has actually been time-wise. Yeah, I do not think I'll be able to do the math on this. Uh, we have a huge cluster, so that's worth three. Uh, by the way, this, unlike Heroes, uh, from an, uh, Heroes in Another Dimension, this game mode is actually really, really good about telling you when you're done uh, with an area. It will flat out say when you've actually collected all the soul pieces, um, which is definitely something that Heroes desperately needed. Uh, some enemies are actually clouded in shadow like that. Uh, those will have uh, soul pieces as well. Um, we have a switch here, very sneaky. Um, the game likes putting soul pieces like kind of out of sight. Again, this game uh, while there is limited camera control, it is largely based on a fixed camera, and I feel like this mode really uses that uh, well, actually, um, to hide things. Basically, putting things just out of view of the camera to make things a little trickier, um, without being overly uh, difficult, I'd say. Um, we have Wild Bonkers once more. Um, I'm not entirely sure about the lighting in these stages. It's, it's kind of like Heroes in Another Dimension where it's a little harsh, uh, but it definitely gets... Uh, the point across of this being like another world, if that makes sense. Uh, also, we have the hammer, so or the uh, level three hammer, so we made short work of this fight. Um, yeah, in general, I actually am a fan of this mode. Looks like you've already collected all the pieces of Leon's soul in this spot. Let's check the next area. So yeah, Elflin will straight up tell you when you're done, which is wonderful. So each screen of a stage is based on one area corresponding to that particular level in the world. Uh, so now we're basically on stage two of um, 
the natural plains. By the way, uh, this is kind of a, a little, um, a little different than other Kirby games and how you actually have to make this work. Um, it's not as, like, straightforward because of, um, Lab Discover, uh, uh, being actually included in the full acronym. But if you take the first letter of every world, um, in the game, it actually spells New World. But again, it will actually spell, a uh, New World without the D, um, but you actually have to include the, um, Lab Discover, uh, as separate, basically. So it's kind of not as, like, um, not as, um, obvious, I think, as some other Kirby games where they spell out, um, something with the, uh, the name of each world, but it does spell something, sort of, you just have to kind of include, um, two words from the final world. Alright, so, um, we have 50 pieces of Leon's soul in total to find. Um, they're in total in this mode, I should mention, there are about 300 pieces of his soul, and, um, obviously for 100% you want them all, uh, but to actually rescue Leon, you actually don't need every piece. I would recommend getting as many as you can, just because if you have extras, that doesn't hurt, and also, again, for 100%, I think you do need every piece of his soul. Um, but yeah, to actually, um, finish the mode, you actually don't need everything. Looks like you've you've already collected all the pieces of Leon's soul in this in this spot. Let's check the next area. I have a feeling we'll be getting very sick of seeing that after a while. I may stop reading it out loud, to be honest. Uh, you can also speed up text by pressing A. Uh, I haven't actually been doing that to this playthrough, but I might start doing that. Just uh, making an exception for uh, this, just because of how many times we'll inevitably see this. You know. Um, Four to five areas across like six stages, that's a lot of times. Also, the music is really good. Um, again, this game's soundtrack, I feel it leans a little bit more towards like rock. Um, and I think it's actually really good. We're in a new world, it's a good way to like differentiate between like uh, Kirby settings by having a very different like. Um, like, soundtrack style, even, um, to set it apart. Not that other Kirby games haven't had, like, rock music, uh, for soundtracks. It just feels like this game leans more into it, in my opinion. And I, again, I do think it's actually a really good choice to help to distinguish this game, uh, from other Kirby soundtracks. I've actually been doing a very bad job of remembering to use the bomb arcs, uh, it definitely caused problems in that one treasure road, but in general, it feels like an in most cases, you can actually use the roll no problem, and it's totally fine. We also haven't even um, evolved this ability at all, because I don't use Bomb very much. Um, bomb is a good ability, especially when you upgrade it. But for some reason, I just have not upgraded much, really. Um, mostly just, like, the abilities that are needed for missions, and the abilities that I use regularly, to the point where I actually should go and show off more abilities. Maybe, depending on how long this takes, which I don't think it'll take very long, uh, the later ones might, but this one probably won't take too long. Um, I might go ahead and actually evolve some abilities just to, um, uh, get the ball rolling on that. We have, like, nine rare stones, so it's not like we have a shortage of rare gems. Um, you do want to keep some rare gems, uh, for the end of the Isolated Isles, because there are a there's actually one more, like, story-relevant, um, story-relevant, um, blueprint. Uh, this kind of sucks, uh, as someone with depth perception issues. Uh, this definitely tripped me up on my first playthrough. I can't believe I got that first try, actually. But yeah, I don't have the best depth perception, um, this has actually caused a lot of problems in various, like, 3D games with, like, fixed cameras like this. Uh, games where you can actually move the camera around, I have no problem, but, yeah, when you have a fixed camera, I end up getting really tripped up by, um, specific, uh, like, optical illusions. Um, in a way, I almost am surprised it took until the Switch to get a 3D Kirby. Um, I think a 3D Kirby game actually would have worked well in 3DS, kind of, like, uh, some areas in this game are kind of like the Mario 3D Land and 3D World games, so I feel like it would have worked. 
And there's a particular piece of the soul that is ingrained into my memory because I missed this one on my first playthrough because it's really mean. It's actually down here under this ledge. It's actually not the easiest one to spot. Um, there we go. Found all the pieces of soul. Yeah, I am making a decision to skip that. Um, it's good to see it, to know that we've collected them, but I don't entirely feel like reading it. Like, you know, five times a stage. Next up we have the mall, so this is actually the last regular stage of um, the Natural Plains, but actually um, there are typically five screens in each of the Isolated Idol stages. Um, there is one area that does have five levels straight up, um, but in general you tend to have little extra areas as well. Uh, in the ones that only have four stages, so we'll see that after this. For now, let's just focus on finding all the uh, soul pieces here. Um, definitely uh, remember this area because I want to say this one also kind of tripped me up a little bit. Again, stuff I get, um, stuff I forget is the stuff I got first try. The stuff I, that took me an eternity to find is the stuff I very clearly remember in games like this, and that's usually how it goes. Um, so we have a bomb block there to free that piece of the soul. Uh, we have to be quick because it will fall off the cliff otherwise. Um, there's also one behind here again. This game gets mean with its, uh, soul placements. So, yeah, I definitely would recommend keeping an eye out. And also, in areas where you can backtrack, it's not too big of a deal. Um, in some areas, you actually can't. So, definitely be on the lookout to be on the safe side. Um... I am planning ahead and getting fire because, uh, reasons. Now we have more of these little green pieces here to actually make a star. Uh, the last one is actually up this ladder. Yeah, in this case, it's also memories of going through the mall twice for this very playthrough. So yeah, I definitely remember this area fairly well. Looks like you've, cl you've already collected all pieces of Leon's soul in this spot. All right, cool. Good to go. So at this point, it's actually really easy to count. Whenever, whenever you're on the uh, last screen, you know how many pieces there are. Uh, I actually haven't been keeping track, to be totally honest. Um, so I'm not the person to ask to actually know how many pieces are in each screen specifically. Um, but the boss of each stage has five. So that means there are at least... There, that there, it means that there are seven here, uh, so that makes it easy. So if we get to the end and we only have 44, we know exactly uh, uh, how many we're missing. Uh, to be fair, then Elf Elfland will tell us anyway, so um, it's kind of a moot point now that I think about it. Um, but again, that is the best change from Heroes, is actually telling you straight up when you're done in an area. Um, Though, to be fair, Heroes in Another Dimension was also a lot more linear, I think. So, in a way, I almost feel like it doesn't matter as much, just because it's so much more linear. Um, there's a really sneaky one. This is definitely one I remember because I missed it um, on my first playthrough. Uh, there's one by the sign. Uh, again, they get really sneaky um, in this mode. I like it, honestly. Again, it's very much like Heroes in Another Dimension, where it's like the same game, uh, or like comparable stages and everything, but basically with the difficulty dialed up uh, to 11. And I think that's good. The Kirby games typically are like this, where the main game isn't bad. Like, you can easily breeze through the main game uh, without too much trouble. Uh, collecting everything in the main stages will give you a little bit of trouble. By the way, um, rare stone. So, if I'm not mistaken, each um, each one of these areas will have a rare stone. Um, I actually don't know if I know where all of them are, if I'm being honest. I think I only know where a couple of them are. Like, that one's obvious. Uh, this one I actually got in a really stupid way on my own playthrough. I actually fell down from above to get that. I do not recommend, because again, I have depth perception issues. So that is not the best way to do that. Um, Definitely just go around, <laughs> and don't take unnecessary risks. But again, you can technically fall from these upper blocks, it's just not a good idea in the slightest. Um, 
One more enemy here. Let's drop this quickly and then climb up uh, to another warp star. Well, this looks very familiar, so of course we're going through all the stages again, which means we also have to go through all the bosses again. We're being given Hammer and Ranger. I kind of don't want either. We're just going to go with this Maximum Tomato and take the Warp Star uh, to the boss. The Strong-Armed Illusion, Phantom Gormondo. So yeah, like in Heroes in the Dimension, I'll be comparing this to that a lot, to be honest. Um, this is just a harder version of our uh, fight with Gormondo. It's actually kind of tricky. I'm not entirely sure how this will go. Um, oh yeah, one thing I actually forgot to mention is the final Waddle Dee is in... Um, oh wow, this is actually... A lot harder. I actually never saw this attack on my uh, personal playthrough, uh, so I wasn't expecting to actually dodge in between shockwaves. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how I missed that attack. Um, maybe like how far away I was standing, depending on if I was. I think I was using Ranger, so that would have explained it. Um, actually, I think that would have meant he would have used it more. Uh, maybe I'm just forgetting. That's another option. Um, what was I saying? Um, Basically, the last Waddle Dee is in the rematch with DDD. After that, there are no more Waddle Dees. Uh, there are 300 Waddle Dees in total, and we have saved them all, uh, so we have nothing to worry about in these stages other than completing them, um, which obviously is easier said than done as I'm taking a ton of damage from this fight. Uh, I can't believe that worked. Um, so yeah, we're just kind of chipping away, trying to deal damage when we can. Uh, in general, these fights tend to start at later phases. So like the debris throwing, I think it's actually more of a phase 2 fight for uh, the regular Guamando fight. Uh, but he's doing it now, or, or he was doing it earlier. Um, he also has a tornado move now. Uh, we can't really capitalize on it, sadly. Um, I am actually messing this up a little bit and not like doing anything too bad, uh, but something I am kind of uh, doing wrong in a way. Um, not that there's necessarily a wrong way to do this, uh, but one thing I should be doing more is actually dodging instead of jumping. Because um, if I dodge and go into slow mo, I can deal damage. If I jump, I can't go into slow mo. Uh, so yeah, that was way better than trying to jump out of the way. And the fire should be able to finish it off. Never mind, this animation actually cancels out the fire. Never mind. So, I learned something about this fight, that the fire will not chip away at his health um, during the quick time event, and then will immediately start up again. Uh, so, good to know. Anyway, we got through, we didn't even need to use our Maximum Tomato, and we found the final pieces of Leon's soul in our first area. And with that, we found all 50 pieces in the first area. Unfortunately, not every area will have 50, so you actually do have to play all the stages, even if you, um, in order to even get the required amount to reach the ending. It's designed in a very sneaky way that I find equally impressive and kind of uh, frustrating. Meta Knight Sword. The Meta Knight Sword has a bunch of cool attacks, just like its namesake. Sword slide, jump, and attack to use upper caliber. With full health, you'll even sling crescent shots. Alright, so uh, we went through uh, 
the Forgo Plain, so next up is Forgo Bay. But I actually think we'll save this for later. Um, but again, it's designed in a way that you cannot actually get enough um, soul pieces without going through all the stages. And again, it makes sense. I was kind of hoping that you could actually skip a stage if you collect enough. But oh well. Um, let's actually head over to the town. Between recording sessions. I wonder if Leon Gar is okay back there. We've gotta find him, Kirby. Let's go. As I was saying, between recording sessions, I went to the trouble of setting up a uh, seven-day trial for Nintendo Switch Online. Uh, so let's see if this will work this time. How do you do, Kirby? Would you like to connect? Oh, to hear the latest info from around the world. Connecting. Ah, King Deity has the blueprint. Isn't he in town? This week's world record time for Tilt and Roll Kirby, 3 star is 6 seconds and 63 milliseconds. So far the number of times you've inhaled objects during your adventure is 278. Globally the total count for objects inhaled is 522,362,200. Would you like to hear more? Let me see. The world record for defeating Leon Gar is 863. They use the copy ability you don't have yet. When I say car mouth cake, do you get a bit hungry? That item has been eaten 956,113 times so far. So far, you've saved 300 Waddle Dees, and the combined total saved all over the world is 173,111,102 Waddle Dees. Would you like to hear more? The solar world record for Meta Knight Cup in wild mode without any power ups, items, or amiibo was 4277, and they won with an ability you haven't encountered yet. The most popular Waddle Dee Cafe item is Maxim Tomato. It's had 2,338,242 orders. The number of star coins you've collected so far is 15,609. And the combined total of star coins collected all over the world is 18,418,519,756. 18, Would you like to hear more? Today's top trend is Meta Knight Sword. It's the most popular ability in the world right now. For Pop Flowers, you've helped 139 bloom during your adventure. The combined total of bloomed Pop Flowers all over the world is 193,737,389. So far, the total number of Awoofies you've defeated is 286, and the combined total of 443,499,685 Awoofies have been defeated worldwide. Goodness, Kirby, you love to stay informed, don't you? To reward your insatiable hunger for knowledge, I'd like to give you this special figure. Huzzah! Why is Waddle when you need wisdom, visit Wise Waddle Dee. He always has a tip handy and seems to know a lot about this new world. His magical encyclopedia can collect and share rankings from all over the world. Where do you even find that book? Anytime you'd like to learn more, I'll be more than happy to share. Again, I'm really not happy about the idea of having to spend $20. Uh, if you don't have a free trial still, uh, potentially spending up to $20 just to get a figurine for 100%. That feels kind of cheap, to be honest. Um, I have an account set up on my main file, but I usually use a secondary uh, Nintendo account for recording, which is why we had this little hang-up. Um, also, behind this statue, if I'm not mistaken... Hey Kirby! I think there's a present code back here. Thank you, Kirby. Maybe it's a thank you gift from the Waddle Dees. 
All right, so I guess for rescuing all the wildies, they built a bunch of statues for us. Um, and one has a present code. Welcome to Wild Deliveries. You can enter a present code here to claim a delivery present. If you have any present codes that were announced online, you can connect online to claim them. You have a present code uh, that you'd like to enter. Okay, go ahead and enter your present code. It just dawned on me, it's really weird that present codes do not require an NSO account, uh, but the Wise Wildy does. That's really weird. Um, I'm not sure if that's even a good incentive to get people to subscribe, to be honest. Aha, uh -huh, that code checks out. Your delivery present is already on its way. Look for it in front of your house. Also, I actually want to drop my power up for something coming up very soon. A delivery present arrived with this present code. Thank you, Kirby. You got a thousand star coins and one rare stone. One thing worth mentioning is there are actually timed exclusive present codes that were delivered through like Nintendo Switch newsletters on the operating system and like through Twitter. Um, there are more than enough present codes, and those usually don't have rare stones, so you don't have to worry about missing out on anything. Welcome, what can I get ya? Maxim Tomato? Got it. That'll be 100 star coins. Would you like to eat this here, or take it to go? Thanks for stopping by. Hope you enjoy it. Is it a waste of money to spend 100 star coins when you can just heal at Kirby's house? Yeah. Is it really adorable? Also yeah, so I think it's worth it. Um, if you ask me. So apparently, King Deity has a blueprint. Hiya Kirby, been a while, hasn't it? I didn't get to say it before, so thanks for saving King Deity. Speaking of, he seems to really like this town. He's been resting to help himself heal. Actually, we have something to give you. It's a blueprint from King Dedede. A gift from the king. What an honor. You got the Masked Hammer Blueprint. Now you can evolve the hammer ability, take it to Wildy's weapons shop. We will take it to the shop at a later time. Um, for now... Uh, let's head over once more to the Isolated Isles. And next time we will continue the search for Leon's soul at, uh, Forgo Bay. So thank you for watching, and I hope you'll join me next time for more Kirby and the Forgotten Land.